Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic, aka Railworks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the first locomotive to have been released by Smokebox. Uh, this is his AT&N Consolidation 280, and I would say this is the locomotive that really brought him onto the scene, but I, I feel like there'd be a toss-up between this and the UP-844. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, everybody and their mother likes the big UP-3, so of course that's what everybody and their mother wants to fiddle with, but really and truly this is the locomotive that he cut his teeth on, and overall it's still a pretty nice locomotive. Uh, it is older, it has been around for a, a minute now, it's definitely showing its age in some ways, but in other ways it's still a charming locomotive to fiddle with. Uh, texture wise, is it's not his best work, uh, tender light's kind of a wonky gray on all of our models. Uh, whatever this tiger striping is down here on our cross beams and such just overall the texturing shows his age uh, but they're not bad locomotives uh, historically these were built in the 20s for a short line called the alabama tennessee and northern which i believe later on was absorbed by the fresco uh, these are pretty unique locomotives. That's part of the reason I'm looking at these. The other reason is I, I wanted to do these before I did the FEF, but it was asked of me to do the FEF, so. Uh, but uh, I like these because these are unique. These are very odd. It's an odd design. These are built for freight operations in semi-mountainous territory. So, one of the most noticeable aspects is these tiny little bitty itty bitty drivers. And these are short. These are incredibly short. Uh, these locomotives are not built for speed at all. <laughs> uh, realistically, you probably never would have seen one of these over 30, 35 mile an hour. Uh, two eight O's in typical air. Two eight O's as a general rule are not fast per se. They're normally not built for speeds. They're built for freight. But as far as the United States go, I can't speak for the rest of the world. But these things are especially built for slow speed freight. But uh, they're pretty decent looking. Like I said, the texturing kind of shows its age. Uh, but overall, not a bad looking model. Uh, other things like the rivet details that are 2D against 3D. So like we have 3D here, 2D here. Uh, it it kind of shows. But overall a decent looking motor. Uh, crispy lettering, crispy numbering. Now, in the pack, I believe the pack is 20 bucks still. Um, say to that what you will, I don't care, but I've had this for years on end. I've most certainly got my money's worth out of it, but uh, it's definitely old enough to almost be considered classic wear, but it's still a decent model. It still holds up. People still do reskins for these all the time on Railworks America. There's so many reskins out there. It's not even funny. But it's an also extremely versatile locomotive. It's used for so many scenarios. It is... It's used on just about every freeware route out there. But it's a great little locomotive overall. It's, just, it's a great size. It's a great build. It's a good generic ish model that still holds a unique flavor to it so um we're sitting back here because the sounds can get a little annoying 
these are still technically considered pro range. They do require a little, a little bit of a touch. Uh, I wouldn't say they're as complicated as, say, the big boys, the FEFs. Uh, I almost find these easier to run than I do the 1800 stuff. These are overall a pretty easy locomotive to learn and a pretty easy locomotive to run. Uh, perfect for scenery, uh, scenic railroads, heritage operations and such. But uh, definitely a unique one. Definitely an odd locomotive to have started out with. Uh, but certainly not a bad one. So inside, most things you can fiddle with. Matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and start building up our fire. Uh, so this is your stoking rate, which is the floor pedal for the firebox. And then, of course, you have your firebox lever, which for some wonky reason doesn't actually work. Uh, sanders, blowers, uh, doors, windows. Injector lever, injector valve, steam throttle, blower throttle, lubricator throttle, compressor, uh, generator, lubricator main valve, oil feed master valve. Now unlike uh, the New Zealand models, you don't have to go through and tinker with all of this it's already set there's nothing you can do about any of this so it's not quite as in-depth but you do still have to physically turn the lubricator on as you can see it is working uh, open our for our doors you have these little front windows you can opt to open or you can just outright open the whole door and then of course your side windows uh, steam throttle again Injectors, cylinder cocks, bell, and reverse. Bell is not half bad. I actually don't hate the bell, but fair warning. <laughs> As you can hear, if you turn the bell on with your mouse inside the cab, you cannot use the B button, or it turns on a completely separate bell, which is really odd, but, you know, eh. Uh, it does have the special brakes that all of smoke boxes locomotives have, so of course our locomotive brakes, our train brakes. Now, even if your brakes have already completely set, the brake sound never stops, which can be a little annoying. Uh, overall cab textures definitely could stand to be updated but they're not half bad. There's a lot of stuff you can fiddle with. The gauges are really nice. I mean they're obviously a very prominent feature. <laughs> they're very much there but the gauges look really nice overall. They got kind of this nice aged antique look to them. Uh, what else can we say? Of course, our whistle. Whistle actually doesn't sound half bad. Uh, it's one of those single chime style hooters. Uh, since we're rolling, I am going to go ahead and open our cylinder cocks up. Because I do believe we're a little, a little bit downhill. Uh, we're on the Wasatch grade right now. Let's come out here and set our switches so we don't run into anything weird. There we go. But uh, with the pack, you get the weathered, you get a regular, you get a lined, and then you'll also get a HUD, and AI, and a helper variant. So helper is for if you use multiple locomotives. The HUD is if you use the F4 HUD. 
and then of course the AI for AI self-explanatory uh, there are no differences between them other than color scheme though so I'm not gonna sit here and nitpick all of it just a uh, heads up that is what you get uh, you're supposed to be building a fire why are you not building a fire get to work uh, what else uh, the whistle is playable, as you guys heard, with the enter button. Headlights, we have our dim and our bright. Dim, I will say, is really hard to tell that is even existent. As you can see, this is off, this is dim. But you can kind of see the little projection on the ground, as opposed to bright. This is noticeable. The bright actually looks really good, though. I like the bright headlight look overall. In Really nothing I can say bad about it. You get up on it and it does kind of have this flare, but it's not too terribly noticeable. Overall, I like I like the I like the light. The smoke, however, there's plenty of things I can say. I do not like the smoke. The smoke particles suck. Sorry, but they they do. The steam doesn't look half bad. The smoke, no. The smoke looks like paint splotches. Very noticeable paint splotches. I don't like them. There is a neat little effect though of it does um, off shelves as you can see it puffs sparks off the stack which is pretty cool. Uh, Exhaust here looks pretty decent. Uh, our cylinder cocks they look pretty decent. They do change with how open the throttle is. They will change in intensity. Rod clank is pretty nice. Uh, your reverser does operate. Kinda. So you can see it does physically function. However, it doesn't attach to anything here. So that's a little wonky, it's a little bit noticeable. Once you catch it, it's not something that you can unsee, I won't lie. Um, So, that is a little wonky, but it does move. Uh, I do believe the brakes function as well. It is hard to see. Uh, now that we're rolling, I think we can go ahead and close our cylinder cocks. Chuff sounds here overall pretty nice. Uh, you can spin the wheels, and they will create little sparks which I will try to replicate in a little bit. There's our sanders, which do this kind of weird little squirt thing. They squirt sand out and they stop. It's kind of different. Pull the reverser back. Okay, I just, I don't like this smoke. Uh, another thing to mention, just for giggles and squiggles, is when you select the locomotive, it will give you the option to have the whole uh, the dry, wet, braking difficulty, and all that funness. But we don't have a whole heavy, we don't have a really heavy load, so it won't, it doesn't take a whole lot for this locomotive to pick up and start rolling. These are all empty, but chuff sounds are pretty decent, um, not that bad, they got kind of a nice deepness to them that's not too obnoxiously quiet and thank god they're not the same thing that's used over and over. Uh, check out our injectors.
don't know whether that changes to both sides. Yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of water drainage right there. Not a whole lot. Just just enough to notice. Look at that, our speedometer is spot on. Just, you know, overall not a half bad sound in locomotive. It's one of the few models that I can say is overall nice, sound-wise. Now, personal taste, I'm not huge on the whistle. It's not my favorite. I'm not a fan of single-time hooters like that. That's a personal taste. I get historical accuracy. Uh, chef sounds, though, those are pretty nice. Overall, I do like them. Uh, here we are doing 30 mile an hour. <laughs> it's about what these things are built to do. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Another oddball. Class lights, U button. Class lights are kind of bright. They're as bright as the headlights, which is odd. Close our throttle now. Um, lead off pressure and slam our brakes. And see if we can get our uh, get our wheels to lock up. There they go. You can walk up the wheels and get these kind of nice spark effects. It looks really cool at night. <laughs> it's kind of one of the wonky things to play with, but I actually do think it's a neat little gimmick to fiddle with. Uh, I believe in real life this will do some actual damage to the mechanical side of the locomotive, but as far as simulation goes, it's kind of a cool little feature. As you can hear, with the uh, emergency brake set, so like right now it's setting brakes, it's constantly putting on pressure. That can get a little annoying. This is absolutely where this special braking can be really annoying. But Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Not a whole ton to go over. Like I said, it is an older model. It shows its age. It could stand to have a facelift. But it's still not half bad. It's still, if you like short lines, scenic railroads, or just short freight trains in general, this is a great locomotive to have. Uh, it's 20 bucks in the Steam store. You can get it on sale normally, half off during all the sales. So you don't have to pay full price for it. But I personally, I think I've gotten my 20 bucks worth out of it. I, I do think it's a decent model. Overall, I think it's worth checking out if you haven't checked it out. It is pretty, pretty decent. It, it shows its age. But it's still a, a fun one. So, I don't have a whole lot else I can say on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
check it out on the Steam store. I will see you guys next time. Later.